Okay, hello year three. Um, welcome. Yeah, it is recording. That's okay. Welcome to some more art. Now I've got a little warm up game for us to do today. Sorry, I'm I'm flicking between a camera and my screen today. Um, I've got an extra little bit of technology that I'm using. So if it all goes wrong, I'm going to blame the technology. Uh, now, as I was saying, before we get started, I thought we'd have a little game. Um, so what I'm going to do, I am going to draw something on a piece of paper that I've got here. And you've got to guess what it is that I am drawing. So let me just swizzle you around like that. Like, woo, now I'm upside down. And then I'm gonna put the camera up like that. Fantastic, I feel like Rob Bidulph doing Draw with Rob. As it call it, Draw with Miss Ryan. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to draw, let's draw up here. That just should be the right way up, yeah. So I'm going to draw it. Have a guess. What do you think it is that I'm drawing? All right. So that's your first guess. I'm going to make that line a little bit longer. You can have another guess now. Do you say you changed your mind? Mm, what do you think now? Any ideas yet? What about if I draw that line there? Hmm. Very cryptic so far, I think, isn't it? Any ideas yet? I think it's starting to take shape a bit now. If you've got it already, amazing. How about now? I think it's really looking quite similar to what it is right now. Oh, I've drawn it a little bit high up to the top than I wanted to. It is, of course, an elephant or an elephant's bottom, should we say? Because it's an elephant looking from behind. There we go. Nice little trick on how to draw an elephant. Okay, next one. Uh, what shall I draw this time? Okay, let's draw this one. Oh, they're a bit lopsided. Never mind, that's fine. Any ideas yet? Have you had a guess? Okay. Hmm. I wonder if you've had any thoughts yet. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, I recognize that. Ooh, a little bit outside the line there, that's not a problem. What about now? Yes, it's a dog. You just need some little freckles and some whiskers. There he is, look, it's my cartoon dog. All right, there we go, a little bit of fun for us. You can have a go at that, yeah, at that yourself at home. Maybe you could have a go at drawing some animals nice and slowly and your parents or your brothers and sisters have got to guess what it is that you're drawing. Okay, right, now bear with me. I am going to find our way back to our, oh, can I find it? Hopefully I can. Back to our, our art. Sorry, everybody, I'm trying to focus on finding it because it seems to have disappeared off my computer, which is always really helpful. Show screen right iPad. So, of course, all you can see at the moment is my piece of paper down here. But what I want to find 
And I think hopefully it's going to pop up. There it is. Look, I can find it. I can do this technology thing. So now I can share that. And then what I'll do, I'm going to swizzle you around again. Do, 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 do. Just like that. So that you lucky lot can still see my face. There we go. Perfect. All right. So today's art, we're going to be carrying on from what we were doing last week. But this time we're going to be moving into plants with colour. So last week we looked at just using pencil. This week we're looking at some colour. Oh, come on, you're going to work. There we go. OK, I'm really hoping you can see my screen. Yes, it does say that you can see my screen. Um, all right, so the aims of this lesson, we're going to show some colours in our sketches and we're going to learn about an artist called Henry Rousseau. Some of you might have heard his name, some of you might even know his artwork, so that'd be really fantastic. If you do, feel free to tell somebody around you, that's really, really great. Now the success criteria we're looking at today is, I can choose colours appropriately for the drawing. I can produce a drawing that shows I have looked carefully at the colours in the photograph. So not just choosing our colours randomly, we're choosing our colours based on the colours that we have in our subject. Now, when I say subject, I don't mean maths and English. The subject, and when we're talking about art, is what we are looking at for our drawing. Okay, so we're looking at the colours in the picture that we're drawing from. Um, I can tell you the names of at least two pieces of Rousseau's work. I can tell you two interesting facts about Rousseau's life. And I can share something interesting about his work. Uh, now, today's date is the 1st of the 3rd, 2021, and our Walt, which, oh, it's not saved it, let me go back a page, is Drawing Plants in Colour. Um, the long Walt, though, actually, is, is written on the weekly timetable, so you can copy it off from there. That's absolutely fine. Okay, let's get into it. So, we're talking about looking at paintings first. So... When we're looking at paintings, what's the sense that we're using? Are we using our hearing? Are we using our sense of smell? No, nope. you're right. It is absolutely our sense of sight. So there's lots of things that we look at when we're looking at in a painting. We're looking at the shapes that are used. We're looking at the colors that are used. We're looking at how emotions are displayed. So many different things that go on inside these paintings. Let's have a look. So this is Mr. Henry Rousseau, a lovely cartoon picture of him. Let's see if we can find out a little bit more about him. So I'm going to read this for you. You can read along with me, try and follow it on the screen, or just sit back and listen, maybe take some notes if there's anything that you really want to remember. So all about Henry Rousseau, 1844 to 1910, and he was French. Henry Rousseau was born in Laval, France. He spent a lot of his life as a tax collector, so that means collecting money from people, including some time as a soldier. Henry Rousseau only started painting seriously when he was in his 40s. He taught himself to paint. He said that he had no teacher other than nature, so he just looked at things and painted what he saw. So that's for it. That's quite a talent there, isn't it? Without having any, any formal training, he's gone on and become a worldwide, world-known artist. He got advice about painting from his friends Félix Auguste Clément and Jean-Léon Jérôme. Now, I don't know those names, so I couldn't tell you who they are, I'm afraid. Um, but I'm going to guess... They were probably artists or just friends that commented on his artwork. That could be some little um, research of your own if you wanted to find out. Although his paintings often show jungle scenes, he never left France in his life. The inspiration for his paintings comes from visits to the bot visits to botanical gardens in Paris and stories from his soldier friends. So. In Paris, there are some gardens, and these gardens are within great big greenhouses. 
Um, so they're able to grow far more exotic plants than you or I could grow in our back gardens because it was warmer within these greenhouses. You might have visit, visited something similar if you have gone to, let me think of an example, um, Birdland in Bolton on the Water. They've got some big greenhouses there where the sloths are kept. Now they've got lots of exotic plants in there because it's warmer and they can keep it more humid. It's a bit like a rainforest. Okay, so you might have, have a think and can you think of anywhere that you've been where you've been into a garden inside a greenhouse and think about the plants that you might have seen there. Um, and also from the, having conversations with his friends, his soldier friends who had traveled the world and had been to these other places and could describe to him not only what they could see, but how they felt inside these, inside these forests and jungles. He said, when I go into the botanical gardens and I see the strange plants of exotic lands, it seems to me that I enter into a dream. So that's fantastic, isn't it? He's really using his imagination when he was visiting those, those um, botanical gardens. Uh, there's also, there's a big botanical garden um, in Cornwall called the Eden Project. Now they don't have glass houses, they have great big bubble domes. Now they're really, really lovely to walk around. You can really imagine yourself in a rainforest in there. If you get the chance to go, absolutely try and go. Um, so here we've also got a, pen, a portrait of Henry Rousseau, which was taken by Pablo Picasso, another very famous artist. You might recognize his name. And this was taken in 1910. So he was quite old then. And if you noticed, he only lived to 1910. So sadly he would have died that year as well. All right, so um, on the screens, we're gonna go through some images. Um, I'd like you to pause the screen on one of these images or you can go back to an image. So what I'll do is I'll flick through each image. I'll have a little bit of a chat about it. And then I'd like you to choose an image to go back and have a look at. Now, when you're looking at it, I want you to really focus what you can see in the painting, what colors are being used, when was this painting made? You could even think about what materials are used to create this picture. So is it paints? Have they stuck things on? Is it oils? All these different things. Is it pencil? Um, <clears throat> why do you think the artist chose that painting to make? What kind of plants and flowers can you see in the painting? You might see some plants that you recognize. Uh, which part of the world do you think the painting shows? That's a really good question, isn't it? You'd have to use a bit of your knowledge from geography to think about where on the earth that painting is showing a place. And how does the painting make you feel? Because paintings are very good at uh, bringing out some emotions. So some people can get a little bit sad. Some people can feel a bit scared. Some paintings can make you feel really happy and jolly or relaxed. So they're very, very good at bringing on some emotions. Okay, so you can all, if you're struggling to remember any of those questions, you can always come back to this part in the, in the video. That's absolutely fine. I'm more than happy for you to go forward, go back, pause it, have another look. So let's have a look at some of these paintings by Henry Rousseau. Now this one, I think this is possibly one of my favourite paintings by Henry Rousseau. This is called Tiger in Tropical Storm and in brackets, Surprised. In 1891, he painted this one. Now, I particularly love how he's shown the wind blowing all the leaves because all the leaves are sort of going in the same direction, aren't they? And you can see we've got some lightning going on at the back there and the sort of silvery lines on the painting are showing that it's raining. Now, remember, he's painted this without ever having been in a jungle or a forest. And he's also got this tiger there that's crouching in the grass. I wonder, how does that make you feel? What's the tiger up to? Next one, this is called the Equatorial Jungle, and this was painted in 1909. Now again, have a look at the shapes of the plants. Now a lot of that on that picture is the same color. There's lots of greens and grays and almost blacks in there as well. Yet you can pick out the individual shapes of the leaves and the grass and the shading that has been used to show this. So because it's all mostly the same sort of color, these flowers in the front, these yellowy ones and these pinky ones, they stand out really, really well. However, the animals 
don't stand out quite so well. So they're really quite well hidden. They're camouflaged, aren't they? So have a think about the colours that Henry has used in that painting. All right, here we've got a, paint, <coughs> a painting called The Exotic Landscape. And this was painted in 1908. So we've got some lovely plants going on here, haven't we? I'm not going to tell you what any of them are because I'd like you to really think about it. But I want to talk about the shapes. So look at the shapes of these leaves here. They're quite flat and broad, aren't they? Whereas down at the front, the grass is quite long and thin. So Henry's done a really great job of showing the different shapes of the plants in this painting. How does this one make you feel? All right, so here we've got a bouquet of flowers with an ivy branch. That's what it's called. And it was painted in 1909. So this is the ivy branch at the bottom. Now you've probably got, seen ivy around. There's lots of ivy in our country, luckily for us. And it's a very hardy plant. It tends to grow on other things. It's a bit of a climber. Now, this one, Henry's not really trying to um, show a place as much. He's just captured the shapes and the colours of the plants within the vase. I'm aware that I'm getting a bit close to the camera. Sorry, everybody. I get excited by art. So have a look, have a, have a think about the different shapes of the plants, the different colours that he's used, even the way that he's used the colours to show shading in his plants. You might even recognise some of the plants that are in his bouquet. I wonder if you could name them. Oh, I've got a feeling we're about to get interrupted. All right, so let's just go back a bit. So I'd like you to pause on one of these images and think about those questions I asked at the beginning. Think about the colours, think about how it makes you feel. Let's just whiz back. Oh, here we go. <coughs> Sorry, everybody, bear with me. No, Penny, I can't, you have to wait. Um, think about the colours that are used. When was it painted? Can you find that information for me? What materials did he use when he painted these pictures? And why do you think the artist chose these scenes to paint? Um, can you recognise or name any of the plants that are in the pictures or even any of the animals? And which part of the world do you think the artist is painting? Which part of the world is Henry trying to show you here? And finally, how do these paintings make you feel? I think they're all quite different there, aren't they? Well, there was one there that wasn't... Uh, in there. Let me just, I'm just going to bring this one up larger for you. This is, oh, it's not going to let me see. I can't show you the whole thing, so I'll just leave that one. We'll just stick to the ones that we've got on the screen. So here, this one, pause it on this one if you want to. This one, you can pause it on any of these and just take, spend some time looking at it and thinking about those questions. Okay, and then once you've paused it and you've taken just a few moments to have a think about them, then you can come back and we'll carry on. All right, so now we're going to be looking at what a good plant or flower in colour looks like. So have a look at this image on the board first, on the screen, sorry, we're not in school are we at the moment, or well, some of you are in school luckily, um, and think about the shapes that have been used to show this plant. Now I think I could recognise that plant, I couldn't think what it's called, I'm not very good at naming plants. It's something I like to try and challenge myself with. But I quite like here how this artist has used red for the background and the green, greeny blue and yellow to show the actual plant. Now I'm thinking that the yellow is showing where the light is hitting and the new growth on those leaves. And then the darker part is the old growth and where the shadows are. So I think that's really very clever. All right, so what are the differences between these two images? Have a look at them. Have a look at the different shapes that have been used. What are the different plants? Do you recognise them? Just take a moment to have a look at them. Think about the shapes that they've used and then come back to me. Now, I would say that the plant on the left with the pink is is a lovely flowering plant. And the plant on the right, I think that looks a little bit like a coconut tree to me. 
let's just focus on the one we're left at the moment. I'd like to really focus on the shape of the petals. Now, this plant has got quite rounded petals, hasn't it? And almost quite uniformly going up the stem is a, is a flower head coming off either side. And then you can see that there are some leaves coming off the, the stem as well. So the leaves are quite long and pointy, I'd say. So there's lots of different shapes in there. We've got the long pointy leaves, the long stem, the rounded petals, and the different colours that have been used um, in the petals. So we've got the pinker on the outside of it, and then in the middle of the petals, it's a darker pink, isn't it? So that's probably where the darker area would be, maybe a bit of shadow. Um, and also the, the plants often tend to be a bit darker in the middle. Now the plant on the left, we've got quite a thick, chunky trunk, haven't we? With the lines going across it, which is showing the bark of the trunk. Um, and then we've got the spiky leaves that are sort of going in all sorts of which way directions, aren't they? Have a think, how would you describe the shapes in these? If you've got somebody around you, would you tell them how you would describe the shapes? Pause the video here and then come back. All right, so here we've got what a good plant or flower in colour looks like again. So just have a very brief look at these pictures. Now I'd say that both of these plants have got quite pointy leaves actually, but we've got some difference in colour and some slight differences in shape. Oh, I might sneeze everybody, excuse me. Um, just focus on the green one at the moment. Within the green petals, I can see bits of white. Now I think that's a really lovely way of showing some texture texture and some light that's hitting that plant. It's very, very clever. And they've kind of done a similar thing with the pink one, haven't they? They've got that strip of pink going down the middle, the dark pink, and they've really focused on the, um, on the middle of the plant and the detail that's in there with all those little pink spots and the little yellow bits inside to show where the pollen is. All right, so um, we've got a video on Henry Rousseau's painting here. Hopefully it is going to let me, is it going to let me? Ooh. It let me earlier. Ooh, it's not gonna let me. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave that there and I will make sure I put, I will make sure I put a link on the weekly timetable for you so you can watch it from there. So you could pause the video here Go to your weekly timetable, click on the link, watch the video, and then come back to me here. Okay, go off and do that now. Okay, so hopefully you've learned all about Henry Rousseau now. I thought that was a really fabulous video. I really enjoyed watching it. And actually, I learned something new about Henry Rousseau too. So here I just want to remind you about our aims. So we're aiming to draw plants in colours, okay, and learn about Henry Rousseau. Now, let me swing my camera around again, and I'm going to, Penny, could you get me some colouring pencils, please? I'm going to draw for you. Yes, thank you. I'm going to give you a little model for my drawing. Bear with me, I'm just trying to pull up the other bits that I need. <clears throat> so here, on, I'm on the, the weekly timetable here. So on the weekly timetable you can see, move this window away from the shared application, Your screen share this board. Oh hang on, no you can't see that. Um, Sorry, everybody. Okay, I'm on it. He's coming. Okay, here we go. So you can hopefully see that now. So on the weekly timetable, there are some pictures of some plants. Now we're going to be drawing these plants. You can see there's lots of different shapes and colors to be thinking about. I particularly like this one, the Grevillea. So let me get you set up. Do, do, do. Get these spun round and wire. 
There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick sketch. Now I'm going to be doing this quite quickly because I know we're running out of time. Um, but I want you to just really focus on looking at the shapes. So if I'm looking at this grevillea, I can see that. So I want to try and fill my page. So I'm going to start focusing on that piece that comes up there first. And it sort of comes around like that. And then there's a bit here, isn't there? Okay, so that's that top piece there. And then I've got one coming out the other side as well. <coughs> I think I want to make that a little bit longer. So I'm, as I'm drawing this, everybody, I'm taking the time to constantly look back at what it is that I'm drawing to make sure I'm really capturing it. And can you notice I'm doing lots of different little lines rather than just one great big line. I'm hoping you can see that. I might need to move it down a little bit closer. Might be a bit better. Um, rather than just one great big line, I'm using lots of little lines to build up my picture. So now in the front here, I've got this piece of the plant and it's almost quite sort of square, isn't it actually? So you can see my shape is starting to come together now. It comes at a point here. Okay, so there's my basic shapes there. And then I would, if I was doing this, I haven't got time to do it now for you, but I would then fill in all of the extra little bits of detail. So I just want to show you some of the colouring techniques I want us to use. So I've, I've chosen a pink one here. So this here is quite a dark pink, so I want this to be quite vibrant. Okay, so that's that lovely piece coming all the way down. Oh, I love the shapes in this plant. I think they're really quite exciting. There's lots of, sort of sweeping, looping shapes. Oh no, I've broken my pencil, that's not very helpful, is it? Okay, so there's that middle piece coming down. Now I want a lighter pink. I'm hoping this... Now that one I've had to press quite hard to get that dark colour, but this one I'm going to be a little bit more gentle. And I can see that it is a bit darker out there, so I'm going to press a little bit harder on the outside and then bring it back in. Now there's quite a bit of white just along here around this middle part, which is where I can see that the light is hitting it. You noticed also I'm not holding my pencil all the way down here, I'm holding it back a little bit, which means I have a little bit more control over the pressure that I'm putting through my pencil. Okay, so there's a kind of sort of a strip of light I can see here, like a reflection going across the plant here. It is still a little bit pinky, but it's quite white across there. You almost can't really see much of a colour. Just sort of a little bit streaking through it. And then the colour comes back at the bottom again. It's quite a dainty pink though, isn't it, this plant, I think. So here we go. So I've got the lighter, the darker bit, sorry, along the outside of the plant, which is what I can see. And then I've got this strip of light, the reflection where the light is hitting it, going across the middle of the plant here. So if I was doing one of these pieces out here, hopefully this pencil might just hold it, I would make sure this bit, see I'm pressing quite hard, so my grip on this pencil has moved down the pencil to make sure I can put the pressure on. Okay. Now we can't actually see where that goes because it goes behind another one, so I would have the other one drawn in front. Okay. 
but you can see it's starting to come together now. And then up here, I can see there's quite a good sort of strip of dark pink here. And then I would build the colour up again. Around. Okay, so that's my started picture. That's just to give you an idea. Now, I do expect to see them filling your page. So really think about what the furthest points of your plant are and where they're going to be. All right. I'd really like you to choose a picture that you didn't do last week. because I know some of these are the same as last week. Um, so those of you that, that did the. Where's it gone? Did the cactus try something different? Look at some other shapes. Now, I particularly enjoyed this Grevillea, which is why I chose that one. I also I think this um, these lilies are rather lovely. They've got some really beautiful shapes and really beautiful, vibrant colours in there that you could choose. Now, I'm happy for you to just choose a picture, a flower on its own. So if you just wanted to do this flower on its own, that would be absolutely fine by me because I really want you to focus on the detail here. OK, so, for instance, if you're doing this hosta, don't choose to do all the leaves. You could just do maybe a little part this these two leaves here or this big leaf in the foreground, that would be quite lovely. This hibiscus I think is really lovely. There's a lot of detail that you could get, capture in there and look at the way that color blends from the yellow to the red there, really quite exciting. Um, now obviously the grevillea has got a lot of detail in it and lots of different shades in there. So that's quite a nice one to draw. Um, and this allium, if you just want to choose one one flower or a small section of the, of the picture, that's absolutely fine. And this bamboo, maybe you could draw this big one coming up in the foreground or choose one of the ones in the background and really focus in, really look really carefully. Okay, now you can see there's your Walt. Sketch plants in colour and draw inspiration from Henry Russo. So that's your full, um, that's your full Walt there for you. Now let's just go back to here. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to bring you back so you can see me again. There we go. Hi, everybody. Um, now, okay, so let's just go back. I want you to be focusing on your colours, choosing the colours that you're using. Make sure your pencils are nice and sharp. Mine were not very sharp. I wasn't prepared for that, was I? Um, and really think about the really think about what you know about the artist Henry Rousseau now. Um, so let's just go through our success criteria. I can choose colours appropriately for the drawing. I can produce a drawing that shows I have looked many times at the colours in the photograph. So that's you constantly looking. Now you couldn't see what I was doing with my face, but as I was drawing that, I'd be drawing something and constantly checking back to make sure I've got the right angle, the right size, the right shapes to capture that plant. Um, now, can you write down two names, or at least two names, of two pieces of work for Henry Rousseau? So that was all those lovely paintings that we went through, wasn't it? Can you remember two of them? Um, can you tell me an interesting fact about Henry Rousseau's life? Two facts would be amazing, but one I'm happy with. And can you share something interesting about his work? So something that we've learned today that is interesting, that has interested you about Henry Rousseau's work. All right, so now it's your turn. Use your knowledge and skills learned so far to draw your own versions of one of the plants in the photos provided. So that's those, that's those plants on the weekly timetable. Uh, make sure, please remember that you're looking frequently. That means all the time, constantly and carefully at what you are copying. Think about the choices of colour that is appropriate for your plants. So if you've got a picture of the um, Grevillea, I don't expect to see it yellow. Okay, I expect it to see it pink or as close to pink as you can make. Fill your page. There's no good having a teeny tiny little picture on a great big page because we won't be able to see it very well and include as much detail as you possibly can. So take your time over it. Having said that, I'm going to go and I'm going to let you get on with it. So well done, everybody. Hopefully you've enjoyed that and keep drawing. It's great fun to keep drawing. Now, let me do 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 do. 
Oh, can I get out of this? Oh, here we go. Stop recording. Right. Take care, everybody. Bye.